So end of last year, my brother finished Code Bootcamp. In-person one, about 20 grand. And here are his stats in terms of getting a job. He sent 150 applications, got six interviews and two offers. Now that's a lot, but considering the state of the tech economy, it's pretty good. Here's what's a little bit scary though. Most people in his class, they still don't have a job and it's been a year. They've sailed past 700 or even a thousand cold applications with no results and in some cases, no interviews. So what did my brother do that was different? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. A few specific strategies that can help you get a job more intelligently because the truth is just the resume, it doesn't really work. Let's start with a sobering truth. Unless your resume has an Ivy League on there, I'm not saying you should add one, but an Ivy League or a top tech company, Google, Amazon, Facebook. If you're cold applying for jobs on job boards, you're probably getting thrown straight in the trash folder, even if you do spend the time to write that cover letter. And I know this because I literally worked with the resume parsing software at Uber. Now this seems unfair, but let's be real. As a entry level person, you will lose that company money. You're not only writing some garbage code, but you're taking senior developers time away from other stuff. So the question is how much money are you going to lose them and for how long? You're starting in the negative. So the name of the game is to offset this by first building credibility and also building rapport directly with people. So let's start with strategy one out of four that is building for production. I've been saying this for years, but fake projects, they really don't do it. I mean, everyone has them. That is something you code in your own time. You never deploy and it's basically just sitting on GitHub in the same way, coding a little bit every day and practicing that is also just the bare minimum. Now, what most people aren't doing is trying to build something real. If you know how to code even to a decent level, stop what you're doing and think about what you can build that is actually useful, even if it's outside of your current skill set. That might be a Shopify app, an iPhone app, a game. It might be a very simple open source library. Just think of code that you have to write in every project and just start building something that could become real. Bonus points if you post about the progress on Twitter. Now, my brother, he was building a very simple Shopify app. He didn't finish it, but he had both something to lead with when he talked to people, something to talk about in the interviews. And even if he never got a job, by now he would have a year of experience on a real project, even though he was the only developer. Most people, on the other hand, they're doing their one leak code a day. They are sending five cold applications and calling it a day. And if that's you, you're going to stay exactly where you are. Okay. Next strategy is LinkedIn. Here's what my brother did. He sent 200 requests. In his case, mostly people who went to his same university and now worked in the tech industry. Along with those requests, you can send a message. These 200 messages led to 20 referrals, many of which then converted to interviews. Getting referred puts you in a different bucket from everyone else. It increases your chance exponentially to actually get a chance. Now, when it comes to sending the message, you have to do it in a specific way. Instead of asking for a referral or just asking for help, you want to say that you're already looking for a job at their company and then asking if you don't mind sending over a few questions that can get you started with a conversation that can then either lead to a call or you can just straight up ask for a referral in the message. But after a little bit of time, in fact, it's best if you build as much rapport as possible before asking, because then they'll actually be an advocate for you rather than just submitting it into the referral system. Okay. Next strategy is applying for unexpected companies. Specifically agencies work very well. My bro didn't land a agency job, but in my community Fremo, this is where we see, I would even say the majority of people getting their first gigs. The great part about agencies is there's literally tens of thousands of them. Majority of them are on the smaller side, so they don't have a dedicated HR department. So they're not getting as many applications. The other thing that's great is a lot of them can use you for part-time work to try you out. So it's less risky for them, but you can still fully put that on your resume. Now, what you can do is search for agencies on LinkedIn, Google. You can even search on Twitter, but then you want to actually find who the founder of that agency is and then message them directly on social media if possible. Lead with your current big project and then ask them if they need any extra help. You just want to make it an easy yes for them. Make sure to manage these people you're contacting in a centralized place because it could get messy. Even a, just a Google sheet works really well. Now, next tip, going to recruiters. Again, search recruiters on LinkedIn. My bro actually had a few recruiters reach out to him even without experience because here's the dark secret. A lot of recruiters don't even really know what to look for. So if your profile on LinkedIn looks legit, you could get a 
few inbound requests. What you can also do is use the search feature. Once again, message recruiters directly. Again, lead with what you can do. Say you're on the job hunt and try to build a little bit of rapport with them. A single recruiter could have multiple jobs they're trying to place people for and they get paid when they place you in a job so they can become an advocate for you and actually do a lot of the work for you. And with recruiters, you're gonna get an even higher response rate because even if they can't place you now, it's their job to build a network of developers for down the road or whenever. So these connections are not a waste of time. So in summary, build for production. You can use those three methods to connect directly with people and that combination of building the rapport and building up yourself in terms of you as a marketable asset, that combination is really gonna push you above the masses. I'll sneak this in here too. It is gonna take more people than you might realize, but if you're spending the same amount of time doing these strategies instead of the cold strategies, this is just gonna get you a fast Faster ROI. Now this of course is still gonna take quite a bit of time, but at least you're building connections, rapport, your skill set on that real project instead of just spinning the wheels and staying in the same place. Now, if you are not quite there yet with applying for the job, one place I recommend starting is Course Careers. My YouTube friend, Tech with Tim, teaches the entry level course. It's free, it's really great. So whether you're just starting or wanna get the fundamentals down a bit better, I highly recommend checking out their free course. Link is below. With that being said, guys, more videos on the way, tech, careers, and you know the lifestyle this unlocks for you are all things I talk about. So I hope you'll stick around and I'll see you in the next one.